Hi folks, Scott Sager with you here today, RTC TV4. We're here with another edition of We the People. This is our program that gives you the opportunity to learn from your local leaders in government. Of course, that's a uh, text from the preamble of the Constitution, which at one point I had memorized. I'm sure you did. Uh, we've got Ted Denton in here today. Ted is the mayor of Rochester. He's going to give us a little rundown of what's been happening and also uh, give him the opportunity to talk to uh, some of his constituents here about uh, some of the great successes they've had. I know we're going to talk about a couple of high school things that have been going on, some other things here in the community. So without further ado, welcome, Mr. Mayor. Well, thanks, Scott, and I appreciate coming back. I also want to wish you a good, good Friday yes. and a happy Easter. And, uh, yeah, the weather outside really looks like for a good Friday with the yeah. overcast day and it does. and such. The sunshine coming on Sunday. Though, the Sunday, right? <laughs> and that's something that's very appropriate. I think uh, so. Speaking of that, I would encourage anyone and everyone to come to the community uh, services out at the high school at 1030 where we've got uh, the churches coming together, most of them, for, uh, for an Easter service. Uh, look forward to seeing you all out there. Uh, Talk about 4th Street today. That's okay. one thing I wanted to start out with. Uh, this is uh, April the 19th, and those of you watching will be seeing uh, some changes out there very quickly. I know they're moving very fast. Uh, and we've asked people to stay away as much as possible, mm -hmm. street being closed, because uh, they are working like uh, a beehive out there. They're going to start, uh, well, actually starting today, milling quite a bit of the area. Wow. Where they're taking the old uh, uh, pavement away mm -hmm. and to, in preparation for the new pavement, and we're uh, we're going to extend uh, the process, the work across 25 oh, wow. out Fort Wayne Road till we reach the city limits, which are just at the end of uh, Wilson's Body Shop, going, okay. going out towards the east, and we're going to uh, bring that up uh, to a thicker level of pavement for Excellent. them the truck traffic and stuff that's going on out there. And then also we are going to pave from the railroad tracks uh, on 4th Street uh, west to Main Street. Oh, wow. Uh, won't be putting doing the sidewalks over or anything like that, but just doing a, a paving job so that it matches real nice with mm -hmm. the Community Crossing Grant project. Perfect. And then somewhere down the road, a year or two years away, we would like to uh, throw the rest of that area going uh, to Main Street into a Community Crossings request for grant and do some sidewalks and uh, some other improvements Excellent. over there. Excellent. So that that's starting right now, folks. Uh, they call it wedging and leveling from uh, the railroad tracks up to Main Street. Those of you who are in the uh, uh, paving business will understand what that is. They take the uh, the crown off the top of the mm -hmm. of the street and still leave the sides beefed up and then pave it all accordingly so that it's nice and and sturdy and our trucks and heavy traffic running down through there won't be tearing at all. Yeah, up. so you're doing the prep work for um, heavier traffic to be yes. going across 4th Street. That That's the intent. Excellent. That is certainly the intent. Excellent. So there were some hiccups along the way. You guys jumped in, took care of the hiccups. Uh, there was some Underground water coming up. You've had some issues with the weather. All sorts of things get oh, in yeah. play. But we've had a yeah. good month, even in some of this inclement we weather. They've really been out there every day. We have. Uh, the E&B uh, folks have really picked the pace up out there. The HIS construction folks, uh, they bring, have brought people in uh, in numbers now. And, uh, yeah, anybody who has taken a peek out there, there are a lot of guys out there walking around and ladies in yellow shirts and mm -hmm. and white hard hats so yeah, they're getting it done a lot of activity going on out there uh, another part of the project that will be coming up uh, very quickly we'll be asking the folks over on ohio street to give us the street for a day or two and we're going uh, on each side of the street and dig out where the uh, just to, off towards the street side uh, of the sidewalks dig out an area and uh, put uh, stone in okay. for people to park right up there next to the sidewalk nice. between the sidewalk then in the street. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's going to be done here pretty quickly. Right. Uh, again, uh, David Heidi wanted me to say we had our construction meeting yesterday. Okay. We, we have one every week. They, they're Thursdays. And he said, Mayor, you can give this update 
but make sure you say weather permitting. Amen. Amen. They, it's Indiana. Yeah, they're used to that, especially with our spring coverage of sports and outdoor activities. Uh, we've had to cancel quite a few already this year. We had snow in April yeah. again this year. Oh my so. gosh. Well, I can tell you this, folks, for sure, all that construction work and everything going on out there, they haven't found the first mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Not yet, anyway, right? That's right. So good stuff going on at 4th Street. Uh, what else you have for us? Today? Well, uh, you know, we've, we've got uh, uh, lots of things going on uh, mm -hmm. with the campaign and such, mm -hmm. so it's keeping us pretty busy. Uh, I would... Uh, Again, encourage everyone to vote in the primary. Mm -hmm. You can start the early voting April the 22nd. And again, you know, I got I to gotta throw in the marketing part here. You always got to ask for the sale. I would encourage you to vote for me. Uh, we've got an awful lot on the plate. We've accomplished a lot. Uh, you know, things, things that we haven't thrown out and talked about, like trees down Main Street. Mm -hmm. We got that accomplished during the last program. New bathroom over at the uh, park. Mm -hmm. uh, which, gosh, I'm really, really happy to see over there. It's a concrete bathroom, mm -hmm. and it's tornado-proof, mm -hmm. which makes me breathe a little easier because we got lots of kids over there at different times. And You ever been out on a softball field when the sky turned green and yeah. you saw a tornado coming? <laughs> You're I have, under, yeah. and you are looking for a ditch yeah. or anything out in the middle of nowhere. Not a fun thing. Right. But uh, anyway, we've got uh, the disc golf course out there, yeah. and then we're going to be finishing it up very soon here. When I say finishing it up, it's playable now. It's an 18-hole course, but what we did not get in last year in time was our ADA portion of it. Okay. Uh, right next to the old tennis courts where the bicycle uh, mm -hmm. jumping area is out there, we're, uh, we're leveling an area and paving it to put in three Holes where uh, anybody who's uh, handicapped, mm -hmm. wheelchair accessible, mm -hmm. can go down and play some disc golf. Nice. Well, it's it's not like your private uh, courses where you don't have to consider the ADA mm -hmm. situations. Uh, municipal situation, you do. Yeah. And, and uh, rightfully so. Absolutely. You want to make it accessible to everybody. I've played disc golf uh, down at Honey Bear and some of the other courses here. Uh, take my kids. It's a nice walk in the Absolutely. woods, if you will. And, and here in Rochester, of course, it's out in nature. You've got a few trees to work around, but not too bad. It's a nice course right. out there. Right. Well, and then and, and this, this ADA improvement that we're putting in uh, along with it, it's not to say you can't take a real, real little guy or yeah. little lady out there and start them Absolutely. on disc golf because the, the holes, of course, are shorter. But anyway, that, that's going to be finished up uh, pretty quickly. Uh, as I mentioned before, we've got several projects on the uh, uh, goals and objective mm -hmm. list. But I should note uh, that even the mayor, when he's talking about future projects and things, I can't promise you that things are going to happen because that's not my total decision. Right. Nor can any other candidate. Right. You have to have, as I mentioned before, the city council involvement. Mm -hmm. You have to have the board of works involvement. Mm -hmm. And by all means, you've got to have the clerk treasurer's involvement. Mm -hmm. She's the one who has the checkbook. So, you know, you've got to work in consort right. there before you can go out and say, we are definitely going to do this. Right. Now, if you notice, I have never said that. What I say is, we have goals and we have objectives. Mm -hmm. And part of that goal-setting process is getting all these people on the same page to make that happen. Sure, sure. And it's always a process. It is a process. Um, you know, uh, for many years since I've been back, we, we've worked with the state trying to get some of these grants. We work with grant writers. We've done our due diligence. And sometimes there's another better project or, or more demanding project, and it goes that way, even after all of our due diligence and process. Absolutely. I even uh, the grant process, people say, well, can't you just go get a grant? Uh, none of these things are free. Right. They all have a matching portion, which means, gosh, you know, if I want 20 bucks from them, I'm going to have to pull at least five out of my own pocket. Mm -hmm. So there is a process you go through. Yep. And, and, and uh, I can't say that enough. Whether you're a, a standing uh, representative, city council, mayor, clerk, treasurer, whatever, you're existing uh, in the system, or if you're a candidate, you have to realize that one person can't go 
and make a decision sure. for anything. Sure. So when I when I step up and say we're we're going to look at this, we're going to do this, it's a goal and an objective. Absolutely. Now, I've been very very fortunate that I've got a very proactive uh, city council, mm -hmm. very proactive board of works, and uh, along with that being proactive, they've been very sensitive to our, our uh, clerk treasurer and being fiscally responsible. Mm -hmm. And we've been able to do these things, and a number of them, in a very academic manner. Great. Enough politics, enough, yeah. enough, enough city yeah. business. Right. I've got to share with you folks uh, a couple of things that have happened within the last week uh, that I am just, I'm tickled to death yeah. over. You've got a proud mayor here. Oh my <laughs> gosh, you know, those of you who've known me a long time know that I have do have a heart for the arts. Mm. Uh, my education was in the humanities world and I loved theater arts. I spent a lot of time on stage, uh, speech and English and uh, I'm also a bit of a historian. I like history too, but the arts are uh, close to my heart. And uh, last weekend, uh, Beverly and I got to uh, see a wonderful production at the Rochester High School of Fiddler on the Roof. And I want to publicly compliment uh, Mrs. Brittany uh, Piercy and Mrs. Sidney uh, Gudeman, uh, two young uh, teachers yep. who uh, I guess are out of the uh, elementary mm -hmm. side of our program, mm -hmm. took this mission on with these high school students. And, and I got to level with you. That's one of my favorite shows, Fiddler on the Roof. Mm -hmm. I, I was in it at one time. I was in it with your father at one time <laughs> years <moons> ago. ago. <laughs> uh, got to uh, work with John Delworth. Those of you who remember John Delworth, he was a perfect Tevia. He was so good. He was asked to play it at the uh, Elkhart uh, Bristol Opera House. He played it at Logan Sport. He played it at Peru. So he kind of embraced Tevia. Mm -hmm. Well, I think John would have been very happy with the Rochester performance uh, that I saw. It was it was flawless. And uh, they not only had uh, uh, Tevia, uh, who was uh, who was wonderful, uh, Isaac Smith, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the, just every part. Mm -hmm. There was, you've been in the theater, you know, uh, every once in a while you say, well, we got a pretty good cast, but we got a weak sister in right, that right, one part. Right. There were no weak sisters. Right, right. Every every one of our young people carried their uh, their part into a flawless situation. Not a dropped line. You could hear everybody, and I compliment the technical staff uh, on the hearing everybody uh, under the uh, tutelage of uh, Devon Gibbons. You and I know Devon, yep. technical uh, guru yep. that we've worked with years ago. The lighting and the sound were perfect. Uh, the uh, costumes, wonderful. Uh, it was just a really, really good experience. Yeah, and uh, you know, when I saw the announcement on that, I thought, oh, that's, a, that's a light to chew off. I it's mean, a that's, tough one. That's a Herculean task, and to pull it off at the high school level, um, and, and an older play, right? And, and that's Absolutely. something. It wasn't modern, and it had a lot of uh, iconography and a lot of uh, life that we don't experience today. Right. Uh, of course, right. as, as you, you and I talked off camera, um, right there at the Russian Revolution, you've got the uh, religious issues, you've got the ethnicity issues, you've got all sorts of tradition being broken. Yeah. And yes. uh, to have them bring that forward to our high schoolers and to present that in the community and to excel at it is just phenomenal. Oh. Kudos to the ladies there and all of the cast and the students who put that together. The, the character development, uh, again, as you mentioned, all those elements... Uh, i got to believe there was a lot of talking about what was going on to these young folks who oh, were playing these parts. I mean, you had the young Russian who ended up <laughs> marrying one of Tevia's daughters, yeah. the Jewish daughter. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, the Jewish conflict against the Russian conflict, mm -hmm. and they were, they were ostracized yeah. and, and, and tossed out of both cultures. I mean, for the kids to understand, and some of that is so pertinent to what, what goes on today. Sure. They did a great job. Yeah. And, I'd, and I'd be remiss, too, if I didn't mention the music side with uh, Lisa McMillan. Yes. Uh, holy moat mackerel. Oh, my gosh. What a blessing yes, for Yes, and community. she had a great orchestra put together that, uh, that 
it was just a great time, folks. And if you missed it, I'm I'm sorry that you did. I'm just hoping that these two ladies will collaborate again in the near future for uh, something else, because I'll be there in the front row. Yeah. I would also uh, like to invite them. They, they, I have not talked with them, but I'm going <laughs> to go on camera and invite them to come with me sometime, Scott, and sit and Bring talk them about what, they, what they've done. I would love that. That would be great. Uh, we'll put on the... Uh director hat for you absolutely. and uh, have you talk through absolutely. that. Absolutely. Uh, Ted and I were in a play uh, years ago. Well, it's been years already, my friend. But uh, we were in 12 Angry Men up at the courthouse, and uh, a lot of great people here from Fulton County stepped up. But at the high school level is where they begin to learn that. And quite frankly, the two ladies that you mentioned, they've started a drama club at the elementary school there at Riddle, and that's phenomenal to me. Oh, that's, that's something wonderful. I didn't even have. And so these yep. kids are, are learning that performance. These are all skills that take you further in life, uh, public speaking, if nothing else. Absolutely. And so, uh, again, kudos from RTC and from Mayor Denton here. So uh, pretty well, nice job there. Well, I thank you, but that also segues me into the second thing that uh, brought me a lot of pride. And it was just recently, Wednesday evening, I was uh, asked... Uh, to uh, accept for the third time uh, the Sai uh banner uh, program. Yes. Uh, the banners that the students from uh, several schools, uh, Tippy Valley, Caston, Rochester, elementary, as well as junior high and yes. high school, are, are asked to make these artistic banners. Uh, and it, it just amazes me. We had a we had an auditorium full of folks, yeah. and like I say, they were from all the schools, and we had the art teachers there, and we had administrators from the different schools, and of course we had parents and the students, and uh, the first thing I, I did in my remarks, because there were like 60 banners, <laughs> my gosh, 60 <laughs> kids to recognize in their, their beautiful artwork, uh, the first thing I asked was, I want... All of you out here who believe you're going to be an artist when you're an adult to say, yes, mayor, and yell it out. And it was like, yes, mayor. And I said, well, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I said, let me explain something. I said, uh, and art is, I told them, is in my heart. Theater art is in my heart. But it said it doesn't matter whether it's theater art, musical art, whether you're picking up a brush, a crayon, a pencil. Once you have done that, mm -hmm. you are an artist mm -hmm. for the rest of your life. So I said, let's try that again. <laughs> and Mike Garst, there was a resounding, yes, yes fair, Excellent. which I, I, I was awfully glad to see. But uh, Mrs. Betty Martens yes. and the Sayotes, uh, I thank you for this project. I thank you for encouraging our children to, to be in the world of art. Mm -hmm. Today, so many of the school programs and such are doing away with the arts. Mm -hmm. And this is what makes us whole. This is what makes people complete to, you know, it's all right to be the athlete, and it's all right to be the scholar, but if you don't have some art along with that, you're not complete, in my, in my opinion. You've got to have, even, even, even if you're just appreciating mm -hmm. art, it, it makes you a better person. Absolutely. A more well-rounded person. I agree. I agree. But, uh, no, so I want to compliment them. I was very, very proud to accept uh, the 60 banners. And they're going to go uh, yeah. up on Main Street, and they're also going to go down 9th Street because we got a whole lot more than we yeah. had last year. Actually, I told the folks who were there from Akron we might uh, have to annex Akron just to get all the banners up. But, that's that's uh, great, though. And, and, again, it's, you know, bringing the communities together, first of all, which, you know, we all know that 15 miles away from anywhere is suddenly your enemy. Right. Um, which right. doesn't make sense to me, never has. But um, it, it's good that we're kind of breaking down those borders and getting all these kids together. And, again, this is a... A uh, philanthropic group that gets together, they meet, they have their monthly meetings, and they put together a project that is bettering Fulton County. Well, you make a good point, though, too, about the different schools and things getting together. I've never seen two artists get down across from each other and bang heads. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty rare, isn't it? <laughs> now, I love football. You know, I love football, and I love the basketball program and such. But the, but you're right. There is kind of a unification in the world of art. Sure. Uh, I also want to uh, thank uh, Todd Minnick, the uh, general manager over at the Honeywell Association, and uh, one of his associates, Teresa Galley. They were over here promoting the situation because uh, 
Betty uh, actually uh, got onto this program through uh, the Wabash folks. Okay. They've been doing this for several years Great. over there. And they have been very supportive. Uh, actually, uh, they're in a renovation program for their old uh, theater over there, yes, like like, uh, like we are. Yep. And uh, we've been over to talk to them a little bit about that. And Todd, who I've known for quite a while, says, hey, Mayor, you get that Times Theater rolling. He says, let us know. We want to help be involved wherever That's we can great. with you. So, That's great. Uh, again, it's... Uh, it's good stuff when it comes to the arts. It is. It is. And I appreciate you bringing that up. Everything, but it ties in here as well. Everything's a process. It is. Um, you know, the Times Theater. If somebody wanted to bring in $50 million and invest in it today, they're going to need 50 years to get their money back. Yeah. And so, Now, he told me he didn't have his check. But, he did. But. <laughs> but to have the community doing what they're doing over there right now and the, the folks at the theater group, um, you know, it's a process. It is. It's not going to be done tomorrow. It but is. when it's done, it will have been done right, and it will provide years of enjoyment for the things that are important to Fulton County residents. It is. And, and uh, when you sit down with someone like Todd and he tells you about the process hmm. that uh, was gone through for the Honeywell Association to even be there in Wabash mm -hmm. and the trials and tribulations and the benefactors and sponsors mm -hmm. that had to come forward and, and step up to the plate. It's quite amazing. And again, it does not happen overnight. No. But, uh, you know, what is it? Any journey starts with the first step. Yes, right? sir, it does. And uh, our folks downtown uh, with the Times Theater Group, they've taken that first step. Yeah. Uh, Renee Fringer and everyone oh, yeah. involved, uh, they're, 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 they're moving that forward. So Absolutely. That, and that's great to see. Yeah, so lots of great things happening in Rochester. The downtown partnership. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And the great things that Harry Webb and, and his coalition of folks are right. doing. Um, right. It's yep. all making Rochester a better place to live and raise your children. So. Well, there's a, I think we mentioned it last time. Uh, yeah, RDP with the facade uh, grant program going on. Uh, the, uh, the building owners that participated in the Okra Grant Program, there's nine of them. Uh, those entrepreneurs downtown, who they may not be working with grants, but they're working with money out of their own pocket. You better believe Some it. Some of them, uh, yeah. hundreds yes. of thousands yes. of dollars. Literally hundreds of thousands of dollars. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. They're putting skin in the game. They are. And it's, a, it's an energy, and it's an enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. And I think we got some good things coming. We just need to we just need to keep that energy going and moving forward. Absolutely. And you know, Harry having the, the skin in the game that he does, I don't know that Webbs has looked better. Now granted oh, you absolutely. Know, we all are gonna miss that soda fountain, right? But, oh, I still do. Yeah. <laughs> in the counter. But um overall Green place, River was yeah. my favorite, okay. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Little sarsaparilla. <laughs> But, uh, you know, good things. And it starts there with one, and then it begins to bleed over into two and three and four and five up, um, you know, storefronts um, just looking great and doing great things. So let's keep that up out there, Rochester residents. Kudos to you for what you're doing to make this a better community. Well, you know, we've said for a lot of years, going back when you were in school, going even way back when I was in school, uh, we said that uh, Rochester was a city of friendship and pride. Mm -hmm. uh, Lots of friendship. Well, we're, we're hitting the pride part mm. in stride yeah. now. Yeah, we really and are. And it's, uh, it's really refreshing to see as a hometown boy. Mm. I know you're proud of it. Yeah, too. absolutely. And, and a good point there. And that pride sometimes can go a little too far. The pendulum swings. And uh, sometimes we're proud about things that we necessarily shouldn't be proud about. And so people are picking up that ball and bringing that pride back. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that I like. But, um, you know, keep it up, as I say, at all. It all comes together. It all dovetails to what you're doing and your people are doing uh, in the managing the city, to what the storefront owners are doing, to what our teachers are doing. It all has a trickle effect. And, it does. And it snowballs does. over time. So keep it up, folks, for sure. It does. Our uh, our investors, if you will, our, mm. our, our entrepreneurs, I love talking to them about where they have come from and progressed, mm -hmm. like sitting down with Don Peterson, for example, yeah. or... Or, or uh, the Gunters. Uh, yeah. it, it's amazing to hear their stories, yeah. and 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 it makes you step back and say, you know what? Economic development is more than that 
large factory dropping sure. into the sure. middle of your, of your community. Is. These folks are economic development. Absolutely, they and are. And their their stories need to uh, need to be heard. Absolutely, yeah. The restaurants in downtown Rochester are phenomenal now. I mean, phenomenal mm. compared, especially when you compare them to other cities of our size. Harry's story, Harry yeah. Webb's story, uh, wonderful. And uh, not only investing and 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 putting skin in the game in Rochester, but uh, you go over and. It's got Adam Zink over there. They're over there in North Manchester mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. or uh, Akron, mm -hmm. I mean, Akron. and then North Manchester also. Yep. yep. Um, a real a real process yeah. going on there. And if you know Harry at all, you you see that yes, he's a pharmacist and yes, he's running a business, but his heart is in it. I mean, he sincerely cares about the folks coming in the door with their medications, and we have an aging population right. here, as as most of the country does at this point. And Harry is, he's vested. He's vested in every pill that, that is going out the door and every prescription. And, um, you know, that just kind of, again, rolls over into let's make the storefront better. Let's make the experience better. Hey, we can help more people. Let's go to Akron. They partnered with RTC on, on his storefront there. You know, and next he's over at North Manchester. Harry's going to take over the world one of these days, and there are worse things because Harry does care about what he's doing um, mm -hmm. from from the pharmacy standpoint and from the neighbor standpoint, and that's yeah. important. Because I, you know, without beating up any fast food franchises, I can say that when you go in to buy fast food these days, they're not vested in you. Right. They could care less. Right. They could care less if you're there spending your money or not. Yeah. And the service reflects that. And. I think Harry is the antithesis of that and giving all of that and, and many others in Rochester as well. Well, and Harry's a true example, too, of uh, that if you're a true entrepreneur, if you're a true businessman, the large box chain stores aren't going to put you out of business. Not, not in, a, uh, in a climate like we live in, a rural climate like we live in, because there is uh, uh, that face-to-face, person-to-person need that some of the larger establishments don't provide that that Harry has brought to the forefront, taking the mm -hmm. taking it forward from the Park Baxters of the world. Absolutely. Customer service being yeah. the number one priority. But Harry, I would like that soda fountain back. <laughs> I really, really would. <laughs> Actually, my mother, my mother worked that soda fountain. Did she really? Yeah, as oh, no many, kidding. many high school girls coming up over the years did at Baxter Drugstore. Absolutely. Many of them. A storied history for yeah. sure. Yep. That's fantastic. So what else we have going on? Is that uh, well, that, up for today? Uh, that's pretty much all I have for today, that's Scott. That's great. Uh, no, that's great stuff. We're, uh, we're going to try and do this more often, not only with the mayor, but other uh, leaders here. Again, the show is called We the People. And um, if you haven't read the preamble to your constitution, I would strongly encourage that. Uh, right alongside the Gettysburg Address, probably a 10-minute read, and you've got some education in you. Amazing, the Gettysburg Address was written on an envelope. Yep. Isn't that amazing? Yep. Just, yeah. Yeah, the orator before him spoke for something like 90 minutes, and he got up there and said for... Four minutes of lines, yep. and uh, and his is what's remembered, and yeah, yeah, uh, years later. So great things, and you know, um, you guys know me. I'm a sucker for community. I'm all about neighbors helping neighbors. I'm all about uh, forgiving our faults and looking past them and making everybody better. I think that uh, a rising tide raises all ships, and um, and I think that we're in a position where Rochester continues to excel. I think that we are becoming um, an example for others to follow rather than us going to them and saying, well, what have you done? They're now coming to us. And I think we've seen that warm turn in the past few years. I want to encourage you and, and everybody here in Fulton County to get involved, be involved, um, whether it's by voting, um, which is the mayor alluded to, that's coming up on May 7th for your primaries. So we want you to get out and vote. We want you to be a part of this. Um, a civics lesson for my son the other day, I told him Rochester City proper has roughly 6,100 people. 6,200. 62. Okay, we're Let's on the count up everybody. We're on the uptick now. <laughs> but I said, you know, he asked me how many people vote. And I yeah. said, less than 3,000. Mm -hmm. And that was disconcerting to my sophomore in high school. He thought everybody voted. And, um, you know, that's something here in the Midwest we should take a lot of pride in. I want to encourage people to get out there and do that. But also get out there and be on one of these committees. Be a part of the SIOTS. Be a part of the Rochester Downtown Partnership. There are a lot of things happening here where you've got the time and the skills that these folks need to make Rochester better. 
And as I continue to say, it's a process. It's not going to happen with one great mayor, with one great leader. It's got to be everybody coming together and working towards a goal. Well, it, it is a process. And there are lots of areas and lots of things to get involved in. And even if you feel like, well, gee, I don't know if I have anything to bring to the table or not, you'd be surprised. The first thing that happens is you learn yeah. what's going on. Yeah. And, and you learn about the process. And you learn how things are affected and how things work. And that's when you really start to be able to uh, bring something of yourself forward. You can contribute at that point and be very very substantial. So yeah, I, I would say get involved. You know, we, we have uh, moms and dads who uh, go out and get involved in the sports programs mm -hmm. and such, and those are all important. Don't get me wrong, I spent a lot of time doing that in my tenure, but uh, getting involved in what makes your community tick mm -hmm. is also important to, to the youngsters that, that you're raising, letting them see that it is important to vote. Yes. It is important to fulfill some of these civic obligations that we all have. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, until next time, we're here on We the People. Again, Mayor Denton, thank you for thank your time Thank you, Scott. Today. And again, happy Easter. Yes, to you and as happy well. Easter happy to Easter to everyone. Happy Easter to everybody out there. You may have been passed by the time you've seen this, but uh, we hope that it was a good holiday for you. We'll see you next time right here on RTC TV4.